Hey, good morning slash evening. It's uh, been a beautiful day today. Working, working, working. Go, go, go. We've got a family to provide for. I've got some podcasts to put out. I got to do whatever it takes to, to make things happen. And I'm grateful that you're here today. I want to talk about gratitude today. And the reason that I, this is, topic is brought to my attention and why I'm bringing it about, I've been reading Russell M. Nielsen, president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, prophet, leader. I mean, reading his latest book, he was written in his hundredth year, and in it he suggests that you should talk about gratitude and more, and including in social media, etc. And as a result of that, I felt inclined to share some gratitude. And when I'm talking about just gratitude for how hunky dory and how abundant life is and how wonderful things are. But I want to express gratitude today for trials and tribulations. Because one of the things that I've noted on the first podcast episode was that I want to talk to people that are real people with real problems. And give give in today's episode, I want to give it as a paradigm shift to revisit the trials of your youth or the trials that you may currently be in and recognize that it's part of the divine plan of happiness. Yes, it may be miserable right now. Yes, things may not be going the way you expect them to go. But at the end of the day, they these things that are happening to you are an invitation to a better way, are an invitation to step up as a, a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block. And you know, for just for a small example of this is, in my upbringing as a child, I came from a broken home and lived with more than one family growing up. And I was an only child. And I remember on one occasion, um, I made this fly swatter for, for Mother's Day. And the, you know, we, we, we hot glued some, some cloth with designs and gave this fly swatter away as, as a Mother's Day gift. And, one year, two or three years later, I was probably 14 or 15. Um, I was playing baseball and a, a, na a friend of ours uh, offered to give me a ride home and made arrangements with, with uh, my family for me to come home with them. And, and they said, oh, by the way, we have a football celebration uh, award ceremony that we need to stop at on the way home. And I was like, hey, Free ride home. I don't have a porter to call home back in the day when there was no cell phones, and so I was like, oh, "Yeah, I should be fine. I, I don't think my uh, stepmom's going to be home until later, you know. So it won't. It shouldn't be a big deal." But um, little did I know it was a big deal. Little did I know that I should have asked for a court order and made the phone call, and should have informed my stepmom that uh, I was going to be delayed for about an hour and um, and so two things I want to extract from this before I tell more one is it takes two to tango and my stepmom's intentions were good and honorable and she was striving to teach me for example how to work and how to I had to change as a, as a young man who grew up kind of in the city where I didn't do anything. I this, you know, I didn't know how to work. I didn't know what that meant. And I vowed to her, not vocally, but in my mind's eye, I vowed at a young age and the youth of folly or the folly of youth, excuse me, was I'll never thank her for teaching me anything. And years later, and even right now publicly, I want to express gratitude for what I learned from her. Gratitude for the trials and tribulations that came and and for her intentions for wanting me to help me become a better person. I didn't agree with how she did it per se, but um, at the end of the day, it was part of the plan. And I love it because it, it reminds me of the scripture in Isaiah where it says, out of the furnace of affliction, so, um, so let's tie this all together. So what I'm getting at is when I was 18 years old, I received a special blessing and it said that you've been raised in ways to prepare you for righteousness. And I thought to myself, what? 
when I read this the first time. Are you kidding me? Being abused in many different ways and shapes and forms is a blessing? Like what? What is that all about? And um, on this occasion of this evening, when I came home and I was home for a, for a bit and my, um, my stepmom came home and she was frantic, like upset and explained to me, hey, you're, I'm growing ulcers. I was so worried about you. Uh, you know, why didn't you call? You know, um, I, I've been out driving around looking for you, et cetera, et cetera. She was totally concerned for me. And then she proceeded to take that fly swatter to my back. And I, I don't think I can see the scars anymore, but she took it to my back and um, it was painful. <laughs> it, it, it was for real. And my cousin who was living with us at the time, she kind of witnessed it and now she was about a year younger than me. And, but me and my stepmom, we didn't get along very well because well, number one, I, I didn't like the Iron Fist, and, but she had good intentions. And I, I agree with her intentions. Um, and I just didn't agree with her methodology. But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is I know there are many, many people out there that are, have real pain that have experienced that and then 10 times more than I have. And I, I want to, I want you to know that God knows about these things and that justice is perfect. People get what's coming to them. And I, I pray and I, I ask that, that my stepmom be blessed because she did the best that she knew how and she had good intentions. And I, oh, furthermore, I'm grateful to God for giving me those trials and those tribulations in my youth to one, teach me how to work, growing up on a horse ranch, hauling hay, hauling manure, building fence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It taught me some amazing lessons in life. I didn't recognize them for many years. And the, at the end of the day, I'm full of gratitude because of those experiences. And I invite you to look at a, through a lens, a different lens than you have in the past if you're struggling with some of the struggles you've been through or you're going through right now. Look at through the lens of what can I learn from this? How can this help me become a better person? Because I love the way that uh, Lorenzo Snow his couplet went. I, I, I'll probably butcher it, but from memory, it says something in effect, man is as God once was, and God is as man may become. And I love how his his son, um, that, that Lorenzo Snow's son said that, in effect, when Lorenzo Snow received that idea and, and, and that revelation and that wrote that couplet, that it shaped his whole entire life. And likewise, my experience, when I learned that a, a kitten becomes a cat, a puppy becomes a dog, a colt becomes a horse, a chick becomes a chicken, etc., etc., etc. Likewise, as sons and daughters of God, we can become like him. And that opened my mind. Wow, I have divine potentiality. But to, to achieve that divine potentiality, to access discipleship and the prosperity of a disciple you, you got to give up some things what is it that you got to give up you got to give up weakness i'm just using the word singular weakness not weaknesses and that essentially is the natural man the carnal central devilish selfish about me 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 and you've got to you've got to surrender it and the the natural man doesn't want to surrender because that means death to the natural man he he has no power over you because you're submitting to a higher law you're submitting to the teachings of Jesus Christ and you're and you're living divine law and you're having access to divine power and because of that um, you you subdue not only your thoughts and your words and your deeds, but you subdue your physique as well. And in so doing, you become a vessel in the hand of the Lord. 
and he takes the weak things of the earth such as me those that are unworthy creatures such as me and he can make a difference in you and in part when you take accountability and say hey i've had i was dealt a rubbish hand if you will and recognize wow what is rubbish good for it's excellent fertilizer folks excellent for fertile ground and recognize that that furnace of affliction you've been raised in or that you've experienced or there's someone you know that's experienced that that it is designed to help you change and help you grow then you your life begins to transform then you begin to see i love how it's put again in the in the pearl of great price you begin to see taste that the taste of the bitter helps you to enjoy and to prize the good so um gratitude where is your gratitude and i i i believe i've mentioned this before i love this the scripture in the doctrine of heaven with section 59 verse 21 where it says in nothing doth men offend god than to not recognize his hand in all things it doesn't say some things it says all things including your trials and your tribulations recognize that god has put those things in your path not because you are not good enough not because you are cursed not because whatever other excuse you can think of he did it because he knew who you were just like he knew who job was he knew that job was a perfect man and that he would have it he that he he was a good man and because of the trials and tribulations that were inflicted upon him he not only proved that he was a good man but he pushed through all of his loss and received even more and likewise you and i have a choice we have the choice to use our agency as disciples of christ or not and if you choose not to then that's you you're not using your agency as one of my professors uh had taught so by choosing to act rather than react you have you are given power and you when you live in accordance to the divine law you have access to divine power and the adversary has no more power over you uh someone someone that I've communicated with recently uh and and shared some some wonderful concepts with them I followed up with them a few days later and say hey how's it going and that well you know things got a little worse and in regards to the person they were concerned about and as I thought oh, it's interesting and the reason why at least my understanding the reason why is that when you turn your life to the lord and, and you gain power over the adversary he doesn't like that so he tries to get to you through the ones you love or those that you know so that he can influence you and bring you back down to ground zero back down to being controlled by the natural man rather than subduing the natural man and yielding to the enticings of the holy spirit so let's have some more gratitude let's recognize and see things as they really are and trials and tribulations as elder max will put it painful personal experiences are invitations to a greater consecration they are not curses they are invitations they are not stumbling blocks they are invitations to stepping stones and and god having been as man is who became in the pearl great price called the man of holiness he is the person we turn to he is the one who's been there done that he is the one who we seek counsel from we seek vertical counsel from rather than horizontal as people of this plane they're wonderful there are some great massive and amazing influences but the whole idea of having people on this plane is to invite us to look up and to commune with god have a direct channel with him because you are his son or daughter and you have the divine nature within you you have the seeds of greatness within you and you can make an impact 
And it's just as a brief reminder, remember, you are the only one who can change you. Put, putting it lightly, so much energy and so much time is often put in the world on changing other people. And, and you know, it's, for example, it's, it's been explained to me that when you point your finger at someone else, you got four finger or three fingers at least pointing right back at you. Let's work on changing you before changing your neighbor. The teaching of Christ is take the beam out of your own eye before you take the moat out of the other. It's explained to me once, what is a moat? A moat is, you know, if you're, if you're, it's a sunny day and you shake the, the curtains in your home and you see the little dust particles in the air, one of those little dust particles is a moat. That's how small it is versus a beam with, let's say a beam is like a toothpick. <laughs> we, we are unworthy creatures. We are less than the dust of the earth. Why? Because the dust of the earth obeys and lives when God speaks. It moves. It doesn't say, well, you know, like in the letter to Garcia, I love that. That's an amazing letter. It doesn't say, you know, give me a breakdown. Why do I need to do this? You know, how much of this do I need to do? How far do I need to go? No, the dirt, and he says, move yonder mountain, moves. No questions, no, no, oh, do, is he better than me? Am I worse than him, blah, blah, blah. Should I do this from fear? Should I do this for whatever? Different, you know, different motivations for doing things like Elder Oaks's uh, book, um, The Pure in Heart, and he talks about five different reasons why people do things, of uh, duty, fear, etc. excellent book. Um, but the, the purest reason of them all, and the only reason of them all, I, be, I believe, but those others can lead up to it. Like, for example, when you go to church, why do you go to church? Because duty? Is it because of reward? Is it because of fear of, of what you're not going to do? Or not going to receive? Or fear of punishment? Or do you go because of love? And sometimes, sometimes we start as we're growing and drawing nearer to the Lord, we might go because of duty, for example. But as you continue to draw near to the Lord and are filled with his love, you begin to do things for love because you're icing with his glory. And when you do things for love, you become immovable and you have armor that is greater than armor, armor that's impenetrable, armor that because love is infinite and it is the one thing that never faileth, the scriptures teach us in Moroni, chapter 7, verse 46. I invite you to seek for this love, to be filled with this love, not a sprinkling of it, but to be filled with it. And it will give you power. And I'm, I'm, not, talking, I'm not talking about worldly power. I'm talking about powers of heaven. And with that, you can make a difference. And when you change and choose to turn to the Lord, He will transform you. I love, love how President Benson put it. He said, the world tells, tells people to change their environment and then they'll change. Well, the Lord changes people's hearts and then they change their environment. Essentially, He takes the slums out of the people because the people change and they change their environment he doesn't t pluck the people out of the slums per se and say um okay now go change you'll change because you're in a better environment now I, I, like for example one thought that comes to mind is magic johnson he, i applaud him in his efforts as an entrepreneur to do that to to transform a community that as far as I understand from reading about it years ago, that was a slum-like area. He's transformed it into a thriving community. He had the audacity to make a difference in people's lives. And likewise, we can make a difference by changing our own lives and we can change from the inside out, change our physique, change our neighborhood, change etc but it's not because we're going out and striving to change other people we are changing ourselves and because we change ourselves because we do what saint francis of assisi taught which is preach the gospel your whole life and when necessary 
use words because we're you are epitome of what you know you are living proof a living witness of of the truth that you have access to and your your words are a byproduct of your thoughts and i love how james teaches in james chapter 3 that that he who, who offendeth not in word is a perfect man so in conclusion of today's episode i, I want to touch the iceberg of the tip of the iceberg in regards to this word perfection as in part of the connection with gratitude uh, i'm sure you've heard of many people many people many many people are making books and writing things about perfectionism and they're writing things about how how to help people overcome perfectionism and i i, I what comes to mind is in the words of isaiah who said essentially in the last days they will call good evil and evil good and this word perfection is a very powerful powerful word in, in the original language i believe it's in greek it essentially means complete and ultimately the ultimate completeness is to be resurrected to have your your body and your and your spirit reunited in an immortal body and to become perfected like Christ was he was resurrected and to become like him and after you've passed this realm of mortality after you no longer have blood running through your veins and you become a being of flesh and blood a flesh and bones um but the point i'm trying to make from this is that perfection is totally possible i'm not talking about perfectionism i'm not talking about throwing a no hitter I'm talking about perfection as what is explained in the scriptures and uh, an, an author that really nails this subject is um and accepting this is a, an essential part of it but on the, from the perspective of taking accountability and taking ownership and striving for and seeking for perfection james allen nails it in his books and i have access to a electronic copy of these books i, I can hook you up with them but um it's you know it's public domain information and i've organized them according to uh put them in verse format it's, it's, and it, it's so awesome but the point I'm trying to make is that perfection is possible. And if it wasn't possible, Jesus Christ himself would not have commanded, be ye therefore perfect. Now, it wasn't a suggestion. It wasn't an idea. And we learn in Isaiah 55 that his word will not return to him void. And his word was to be ye therefore perfect. Hmm. So... I would invite you to have another paradigm shift here when you hear those words, be ye therefore perfect, rather than say, but I've already made a mistake, therefore I can't be perfect, therefore it's impossible to be perfect. I invite you to study the scriptures some more because in Luke 1 37, it says all things are possible with God. And in the Book of Mormon, Moroni, Chapter 10, verse 32 and 33 tells us, tells us that you can be become perfected in Christ. By yourself, you are nothing. By yourself, you are an unworthy creature. By yourself, you have made mistakes. However, in Christ, as a disciple of Christ, when you subdue the natural man and yield to the enticings of the Holy Spirit, you are given power to turn your weakness to a strength and the weakness is a natural man and you can turn that to a strength through Jesus Christ and when you do that you can become like him and you can achieve perfection I'm not talking about complete perfection that you get at resurrection I'm talking about growing line upon line precept upon precept perfection upon perfection for example you can perfectly not smoke and perfectly not drink and perfectly pay your tithing and perfectly attend church and perfectly read your scriptures once a day or, or to study your scriptures every day. 
you can do those things. If you miss a day, you can start the streak again. But the idea of perfection and growing perfection upon perfection is when you're given a, a further light and truth and you live it and become good at it to the point of mastery, then guess what happens? You're given another one. Or you you discover another weakness that you have that needs to be overcome. And as you continue to turn unto, unto Christ, unto God, I should say, and, and become humble and patient and exercise faith in Christ by becoming like him, by emulating the King of Kings, the master of masters, he empowers you. He gives you joy. He gives you the fruits. He is, he gives you peace that surpasses all understanding and he gives you access to abundance including prosperity including understanding and comprehending all things and access to the holy ghost that will teach you the truth of all things line upon line precept upon precept perfection upon perfection so i'm super super grateful for trials and tribulation super super grateful for the privilege to exercise faith in Jesus Christ. Super, super grateful for the privilege to have access to prophets and apostles who teach the principles of Jesus Christ that enable us, when we adhere to those things, enables us to become like Heavenly Father through obedience to law, divine law, divine and when you're obedient to divine law you are you have access to divine intervention when you lose yourself in the service of others you find yourself and when you change the people around you change so thank you for joining me today grateful to have you have a beautiful day and remember to have gratitude as president nelson teaches and it will change your life that one, I got to say one more note on that in, uh, in a book by Raymond Hollywell, super powerful book. It's called Working with the Law. In chapter six, he talks about a very powerful, a powerful, powerful concept. And each of his chapters is called the law. For example, chapter six is called the law of increase. And guess what he says is the law of increase. One magical word. It's not gratitude, but it's akin to it. It is praise. Praise of praise. No, no. Talking about praise from the from two angles. Number one, you have gratitude and you recognize the, the Lord's hand in every area of your life. But I'm also talking to you about praise from the perspective of worship. And when I say worship, I'm not talking again about raising your hands and saying, I worship, I worship. No, worship, the true sense of worship is defined in one word, emulation. When you emulate our Savior, you live his teachings, then you come to the knowledge of truth. You come to the knowledge that he is real. You come to the knowledge of communion with him. You come to the light becomes truth and you grow in light and truth, or in other words, intelligence. And as a result of that, you change and a change starts from the inside out and it transforms everything, including your physique. So y'all have a beautiful day again. Uh, praise by worship, by emulation and when you do that, you'll have access to his help. And yeah, that's it. Talk to you later.